Hi, my name is Every Ocean Hughes. Um, I've made a film called One Big Bag. Uh, it's about a millennial death doula and the tools of the trade. So how we care for, wash, love people around us who are dying in different ways that we can self-determine and make choices towards the end of life. It's a performance film, worked with an incredible team of collaborators, and I hope that you get to see it. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Boy Bobak, and this time we are unpacking one big bag. Hi, welcome to the festival. Welcome to the Teddy. We are very happy to have you here. One big bag is um, an immersive film installation that centers the practice and the experiences of a death doula. Can you tell us a bit about how did you get in touch with this subject? And to what extent does it rely on your own experiences. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, yes, very much. It does touch on my own experience. I, um, when I was a young person, had uh, several friends die in accidents. So I've been greatly impacted by, um, you know, that experience throughout my life. And then about five years ago, um, my beloved grandmother, who was, I always said was like my sister and my mother and my grandmother, um, she was dying and I was there to take care of her for the last few weeks of her life. Um, my two mothers, their, their best friends and my grandmother had raised me and uh, my two moms had always been hospice volunteers for many years. Um, and I was present with how skillful they were around her body um, and knowing how to take care of her physically. I really stepped into the role of uh, kind of emotional, spiritual support um, and wanted to think about both of all of that as, as skills. Um, and so I started to study and train as a doula, how to do home funerals, take care of um, dead bodies, wash them, um, and all of the kind of practices around them and to, um, yeah. So that's on the one hand. On the other hand, I had for many years been, um, you know, maybe like 15, 20 years, been making art projects, um, photographic projects, performance projects around uh, the queer inheritance, queer legacy, queer history. Um, and uh, a lot of, well, we'll say I was so that I connected to that and the um, early um, hospice centers that were built okay. around the age crisis. Um, communities of care that developed and how those became political communities. Um, and so those I think of as the two deep roots for this work. Yeah, I see. Also this piece, um, the performer in it uh, takes um, a very particular queer perspective. Um, and at some point it is detailed how um, queer experiences with death um, and with uh, saying goodbye to the deceased is very different than for, um, for non-queer communities. Can you talk a bit about this? Yes, one of the, mm, I think of it as a point of gravity for the work was really trying to think about like the queerly bodied people and how we pass and how we can take care of each other. Um, one of the things that this work really wants to do is open up a space of self-determination um, and options, you know, really <laughs> for um, creating an encounter. I think this artwork becomes an encounter for people given what the subject matter is and um, really wanting to open up a field in which people can then um, f find their own specific way. And really what I'm talking about is how do you want to die and how if we can think about this rather than turn away from it, which is what most cultures do and we as individuals mostly um do not you know put this in our minds um as because it's such a difficult thing for many people mostly yeah. um that uh if we can turn towards it make some decisions around it speak to our loved ones our chosen family make sure that our bodies um and our relationships will be honored you know, to me, those are very queer questions. Um, and I think it's a great time to start doing that work. I think the funeral 
industries um, need um, a lot of change. The other things, you know, there's so many aspects of this work that I relate to in an activist sense. You know, there's the questions of people going into debt at the end of life. There's environmental questions around, around the materiality of um like burial and all of those things. Um, so really just what the work is trying to open up is a space of, um, you know, choice and self-determination. Right. Also, the, the piece works on many different layers. Um, there are many different technical um, mm -hmm. aspects to it. Can you talk a bit about how did you find uh, the performer, Lindsay Rico, um, for, for, this, for this project and also the whole set that you set up for for the piece mm -hmm. uh lindsay i i'm grateful to lindsay she did a really exceptional job carrying this work because that's really how i think of it it's, it's not an easy script and she um mm -hmm. she carried it she performed it um i first saw lindsay on um in a theater piece, a Marie Irene Fornes theater piece that had not been mounted in since the 70s. It's a difficult work to stage. Um, it's ensemble cast and Lindsay was on the stage and um, she just stuck with me to tell you the truth. Um, she had a real intensity that I was attracted to and that I thought that this work needed. Um, and I think it's a fun detail, which is like, this is the first time I've ever worked with somebody that I didn't know. I've mostly kind of, when I've written characters and um, performances before, I've always written it for a friend, you know, really worked within the queer community, um, pulling on uh, my my friendships, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so this is the first time I reached out to somebody that I didn't know, and I found that like both fun and challenging. Um, but Lindsay did an incredible job. I'm really grateful for that. Um, the set. So if you the film is called One Big Bag. So if you think about um, and it's like a doula or end of life doula, um, uh, it's their toolkit. So it's packed, it's either in your car, it's by the front door and you know, the work has to be done yeah. urgently. If somebody dies, you have to go there. If they're about to die, you have to go there. It's a very local practice um, and something that you just kind of prepared for. You will have worked with this person in advance and now comes the time. So this bag is ready. I was fascinated by that detail. And so, which you'd think in general, you'd think, oh, I have the bag, I take this out, I tell you what it is, each thing, you know? But what I did was I um, installed all of the objects hanging from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, and so Lindsay is inside of the stuff of the bag, all the tools, it's very mundane uh, vernacular kind of objects that you mm -hmm. might already have in your house. Um, and I like the idea that then they come to profound use. Um, and so, yeah, it's Lindsay's fluency in the space. I worked with a choreographer, Miguel Gutierrez, to really be um, intentional about the way that she moves, the way that her movement is interacting with what she's speaking, how she's speaking. It's very matter of fact, yeah. it's information. I really worked on the script to um, really balance that, to work with humor and to understand the um, some of the difficult emotions that can also arise in the work and let the audience find their way. So Lindsay's really navigating all of that while she navigates this physical space. Right. And that was a very interesting tension as well, or which was like a productive tension because I felt like rhythm was quite key to this piece, mm. both in language and both mm. in her interaction with that space and uh, her working with her own body. Can you talk a bit about about rhythm and and how did you, particularly in language and how? Because mm. I I assume that it's quite difficult for a performer to to really like navigate all this together. Mm. Yeah, I love that you that you're pulling that forward. Um, I. I think the tone of the writing and the tone of her speech and the speed of it coupled with her physicality is um, it makes a lot of sense. And then I think the score of the bells, you know, the way mm -hmm. that you're pulling forward this idea of rhythm um, 
when I wrote the script, I um, I wrote this, all the sections in which she's specifically talking about the objects, I thought of them as the chorus. So there's like the expository, and then she comes back and she goes this, 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 you know? And she touches each object and explains what its um, use value is. Um, and so I thought that as like this repeating chorus. So there's definitely also this rhythm over the structure of the whole thing. Yeah. And there's a lot of rhythm in the way that she uses her body, you know? She's articulating her physicality. Um, I'll go on to say that one of the big questions for me was like really wanting a, like a lot of vitality and liveness. Yeah. Um, I have for many years like been making live performance work and that's then meeting film practice in this work. Um, so I really wanted to think about like, how is this live? You know, with her direct address, she's, you know, often if sometimes like looking right at the camera, this idea of a monologue, this way that it's staged in that room, all of those things have like, you know, these kind of like, um, yeah, they're the, like, this comes from like live work, you know, and then the mm -hmm. film and the way that we edited it and the way that um, the liveness is captured of um, her performance and, and thinking about that in terms of like, you know, capture life and death and really trying to use both mediums, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I'm happy that you point out this liveliness in the piece and, mm -hmm. and, and all of that and the humor of it. Um, I thought it was very interesting because at the end of the day we learn about the practice of a death doula and then somehow it's obviously this air of death is is around and mm. how to deal with that but then from a very alive perspective mm -hmm. um and i thought mm. that was once again a very productive tension to mm. kind of still be grounded in this life space mm -hmm. in this aliveness but then to kind of face and think about the time when when death will ultimately reach mm. all of us practically mm. can you talk a bit about this this tension in in there yeah well um yeah that was really something i worked on <laughs> um mostly i'd say you know i first tried to Well, I'd say I tried to write it in a lot, you know, and then yeah. in working with Lindsay and what the performance was and working with Miguel and what the choreography was and in the editing process, you know, I feel like keeping that tension in focus through all of the decisions of the film. Um, it was a, uh, it's kind of like the groundwork, you know, to really keep articulating that, that she, again, the way she is in her body and um, how she is delivering this information. Um, I like to think of the character as an activist. You know, yeah. if we think about like um, who she is, why is she in this space? Why is she dressed like that? You know, none of those things are answered. Um, yet she, she pushes through with this vitality, with this liveness that we connect to. She's talking about this thing that's difficult for many people, but I feel like the way that she's doing it makes a lot of room for you to be with it instead of pushing you away. It brings you into the material. Um, in all those ways, uh, you know, this tension that you speak of, I tried to work with it throughout. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it was very interesting to see how it's like, kind of opens up some access to, mm. To think about this inevitable thing that yeah we just can't counter mm. in any way and we shouldn't possibly mm. um so so that was just very interesting to me let's talk a bit about as as a final question about the the many different things happening here because obviously it's a stage set there is mm. a performance in it but then it's a film and it's an mm. immersive um installation within that so there are many different layers of of, of media playing mm -hmm. into this how did you bring all of these together and how did you navigate this whole process mm. um 
I'll step back one one thing to be able to say that I'm thinking of this as a series of three. The first one is a live performance, um, and it's called Help the Dead. And I think of that as the one that's very social. Um, I think of One Big Bag, this film, as the one that's really focused on this materiality of death. And in mm. that, again, it's Lindsay's body. Um, it's the way that she's performing. It's the intensity that she brings into the room. And it's the materiality of the objects and her relationship to them, that she runs into them, that she, you know, a lot of the objects were also like kind of using in a different way than they're usually used. And like, there's that scene where she's like making a lot of the soundtrack she's making with her body, like running into all of those bells. Um, so yeah, I think that focusing on the materiality of this work is also how it goes from, you know, the idea to the script, to the installation, to the performance, and then also to how the viewer is in the room in relationship to all of that. Um, so my answer is kind of that by saying, you know, to that the, um, that really by focusing on this kind of materiality, both of her body of the objects and of the viewer, I feel like that's how I made all of these decisions mm. about the different um, mediums and materials in the work, the way that it can exist and mm. how somebody is in relationship to it. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much for, for this. Thank you. But first of all, for, for this very intriguing project, especially that it was all taken from a queer perspective, I think it's, mm. it's very important to to think about this in general for everyone, yeah. but probably for queer communities in particular, since there are many difficulties around this subject. That's right. Extra difficulties posed yes. uh, to these communities. Um, so thank you very much and thank you for the interview. Yes. I just want to add one thing, Yeah. <laughs> which is like uh, what I think of is kind of like in the middle of the film. There's this one line where it says um, in big life events, norms get recentered. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, you've brought this up a few times and that's why I'll throw it in here at the end. That was really one of the things I was working on. Like, that's mm. why this film is so explicitly queer. That's where it comes from inside of me and inside of my practice is this. Um, we don't want to have lived these lives, made all of these choices and um, and and struggled to live the way that we want to live in this life. And then at the very end of our lives, be um be under you know this either the funeral industry or religion or your biological family comes into play when you wish they didn't um so i really want to open this up you know and that's why i think yeah. of it um as one of the you know most important ambitions of the work to not let it be a moment where norms get recentered. let's do it how we want to do it yeah and i think it's it's conveyed. So yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you very much again Thank you. for this interview. Thanks.